remember when I was a little kid, I would draw. But the thing is, I wouldn't draw to, to do a drawing. Um, all my drawings were a way of me living in whatever it is that I was doing a drawing of. I would draw dinosaurs, and I would draw some battle scene, and they were more like, the paper was more like a time machine that you could step into and live in that world, and eventually all of my drawings were always scribbled over because there would be so many sound effects and bullets firing and then dinosaurs chasing somebody, and, and it was all just sound effects. That's because it was, it was all happening in my head, and I think that that's, that's what drawing still is for me. It's a chance to, to live in the skin of whatever character it is that I'm animating. Um, my, my dad, cartoonist, uh, he drew the family circus. And um, ever since I was little, um, dad was always encouraging me to think of myself as an artist. Uh, when he was young, he, he was the editor of his school uh, magazine newspaper, uh, the art director of it, I guess. And he, um, he would always say, well, I'm, I'm not an artist, I'm a cartoonist. And when I grew up, though, he would look at me and he said, Glenn, you're an artist. And uh, you, you, you go ahead and, and take a look at this book. And he'd give me a book on uh, Bert Hogarth's Dynamic Anatomy. Study that. Uh, look at the way the, the muscles are working. And, uh, so I would I would do drawings of uh, the figure, and I remember going going on the school bus to uh, to school when I was in third grade, and I had done these these nudes. And the other kids came up, and they were looking at this drawing I had done of the thinker, and they started laughing. Hey, Keith's drawing naked guys. <laughs> I realized, okay, well, I, mean, I guess I'm a little different than anybody else in school. And as I got into animation, I realized that if you really think of yourself as an artist, you're a little different too. Because in animation, it's almost like, I think we, a lot of us forget that this is our moment in time to be an artist. This is what we're born to be. This is our, this is our art form, animation. So that's any time I sit down to draw, that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so are we are we on now? Okay, cool. Alright, so let me let me just show you a way that I would think about animating. Let's say I I'm I'll just do Tarzan here. And Tarzan is let's say he's crouched down on the ground here. And he's looking up at something. And he's going to, I want to, ultimately I want him to jump, right? Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty small, it's hard to see, isn't it? Okay. Uh, I'll try to draw a little bit blacker. Does it? Can we zoom in on that at all? Do, no? Okay. All right. Well, I, one of the things, the first thing that I, I think about as I'm sketching this out is three things. Tilt, rhythm, and twist. These are these are things that are just like as natural as as breathing. In drawing Tarzan, like I'm thinking of him, he's looking up, right? And he's gonna he's gonna go up there somewhere. But immediately I throw the his head is facing this direction. His torso is facing this direction, and his hips are facing this direction. And what that is, is twist. So his whole body is twisting. 
like that. I mean, that's really what uh, I learned from Freddie Moore. You know, if he was doing if he was doing one of the, a Freddie Moore girl, I guess you could say it, he would he would always be having this rhythm tilt rhythm and twist. Now the tilt might happen if the shoulders are going this way, maybe the tilt of the head goes opposite of that. So all of that is, is happening all the time. And even if you're doing uh, aerial, she doesn't have any legs, but you can still Be looking for that same tilt, rhythm, and twist. When I'm animating, uh, I just throw the eyes in with just like a little slash there, because it's always I can always just do a direction. You know, it's amazing how just by drawing a slash there. It, the eye's looking that way, up here it's looking there, if you draw it more round it's looking out at you, just in very quick little motions. And I also, I keep my pencil with a nice chisel point so it's got a flat edge to it. So I can always turn it and I can use the fat side of it or I can use the sharp edge to do something a little more delicate. I've been accused of being a pretty sloppy animator, just messy, and but it's more just like because I, I, I just don't want to take the time to slow down. I'm trying to really capture a feeling that, that's inside of me. And, and I know that I can turn something into a pretty drawing afterwards. But to get a rhythm on that arm, you know, it, it, it's more important that I get that. And let's pose now Ariel uh, is going to swim over this way. So if I'm going to move over this way, then of course I start to move the opposite way. And there's, it's always about anticipation. And I will try to animate as fast as I possibly can. Just to... To not get bogged down. And it's interesting that with Ariel's hair, like I wouldn't move her hair, I just keep it staying pretty much in the same place because it's underwater. When I first started animating her, it was I was always having it move too much. And then one night I came home and Sally Ride, uh, the first female astronaut, was was on TV from the space shuttle. And I watched as her hair just sat there and where she moved it, it just stayed like a cloud. And I realized, oh, that's that's how I'm going to go ahead and animate Ariel, like weightless underwater. So now she's going to move. One of the things that Eric Larson was always talking about was come up with a nice, clear, simple arc. So I I see her. Tilting her head down, this hair stays up where it's at. The swoop moves back. <laughs> 